Hello and welcome back to the University of Nottingham. I'm delighted today to be joined by Father Kevin McGinnell, who is a parish priest in Luton and also highly involved in determining the Roman Catholic Church's policy on funerals. And we're going to talk about cremation uh, today. And um, can I just start by asking you, uh, Kevin, how do Roman Catholics view cremation? The traditional way for Catholics to um, uh, bring somebody's life to an end has been to bury them. Um, and that's got a very deep, ingrained tradition, especially among the Irish community, the Italian community. Um, and cremation itself has not really been seen to be an option, um, an easy option, but it was certainly permitted from 1964. So I suppose because it had been forbidden until then um, for many centuries, it really has taken time for it to become more acceptable and more um, a possibility. Right, because it's um, obviously a fairly new thing in terms of um, uh, Britain itself, mm. isn't it? I mean, it becomes legal in um, 1885 um, and it requires the technology to become more widespread. Um, do you think in the 1960s there was um, much of a demand for cremation amongst Roman Catholics or was, was, there, was there still... It certainly has been seen to be a very slow growth um, right. a, a, a being acceptable among Catholics for all sorts of reasons, part yeah. of that traditional thing that I mentioned. Mm. Um, but also the, the sense to do that deep down people talk about the resurrection of the body. Mm. And while certainly the body in the grave decomposes and disappears in many senses, you've only got to think of Cardinal Newman. Um, <laughs> at the same time, th there was something about uh, the suddenness of the decomposition with, it, with ashes. Um, and it's only slowly that people have begun to think, well, perhaps if we bury ashes after cremation, we're actually doing the same as we are in, in the burial of a body in a coffin. Mm. That's interesting. So the suddenness, you think, has been something that Catholics found difficult? Because, I, so, I mean, it strikes me that one of the interesting things about cremation is that um, people who come from a kind of British Protestant or post-Protestant angle tend to have quite a different view, tend to be quite positive about cremation. Mm. So I think 2010, <coughs> we've got about two thirds of uh, funerals um, resulting in cremation, haven't we, yes. in this country. Mm. Um, and I've heard it said that it's actually the suddenness of the process and what um, I think Robert Hertz describes as the creation of dry remains mm. rather mm. than the slow mm. decomposition, yes. you know, putrefaction in the grave and all mm. that sort of thing, which some people can find really mm. very difficult. I think there are, there are lots of issues really. One, as you say, is the suddenness of the act itself. Yeah. Um, it's also where do you go to visit as part of your mourning process and your remembering process. Mm. Um, and because people were not very sure about the burial of ashes, mm. um, and many ashes are still left at the crematoria generally anyway, mm -hmm. and uncollected, um, that I think people felt that oh, I will go to the grave, I can be I can pray, particularly as with today's All Souls Day, that people are praying for the dead. Yep. They, they've got something to do. There is a physicality about the grave, um, the space to lay more flowers. Whereas even if you use a columbarium or you bury the ashes in, in the ground itself in a single small plot, it's a very small space. The length of a grave um, delineates a human body in a very different way. And that sense of being in touch with somebody is still very important for people. Mm. What proportion of Roman Catholics would be opting for cremation now, do you think? This is a variable. Um, a lot of it's to do where somebody dies. The, the, the lack of grave space in the cities and mm. the cost of graves as well yes. is very prohibitive, so that's the first thing. Um, I would suggest, just from my own experience, we're talking at the most 25% in urban areas, and probably certainly, although I'm in a town itself, we would have less than 10%. Sometimes it happens that somebody dies abroad and therefore they will be cremated there and their ashes brought back. And more now as well, people are cremated in England and their ashes taken to places like Ireland simply because of the prohibitive cost of actually taking a coffin um, and all that's involved in that. Mm. So that notion of using the burial of the ashes <coughs> in, instead of the burial of the body is actually becoming something people are thinking about more. Mm. And is the burial of the ashes seen as a separate liturgical event? 
It is. It's, got, it's exactly the same as burying uh, a coffin, but in a different. There's a different form of words and a different uh, understanding of how you do it. Clearly, because it's a, literally a, a different object. Mm. And what sort of time lapse would <coughs> one typically have between the cremation and the burial of the ashes? Recently, um, somebody died and, and was bur was uh, cremated after a requiem mass, because that's another issue we, we could perhaps talk about. Okay. Um, and their remains were, crem were brought to a cemetery within four days. So it can happen quite, quite quickly. quickly. Yes. Yes. Because I, I know from um, people I'm in touch with, often they um, often in favour of cremation. Mm. And they're not Catholics particularly, but they're in favour of cremation. And then they have a quite really long interval where mm. they decide what they're going to do. I think um, this is often an of interval of many years, actually. Yes. Well, sometimes we have, it's a certainly in, in the documentation, that um, a husband dies and a wife waits um, mm. until her death, if that's appropriate to say, so that both ashes can be buried together. Yes, that's or mixed. Sort of, or mixed, yes, that's Which sort seems of to thing. be a very popular yeah. thing, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you, okay, Requiem Masses, tell me about the significance of that. Well, I think that one of the problems with the crema crematorium is it's been presented for many people as a one-stop funeral. Mm. Whereas our tradition, although some of it's not, not being maintained as much, was to bring the bodies to the church the night before for a vigil, mm -hmm. which is much more a private time. Um, and often, in many cases, now is the place where others come, though, because they can't get off work the next day, so they offer condolences. Um, then there's a requiem mass the following morning, um, and then you go to the cemetery for the burial um, and or cremation. If you just have a service in the crematorium chapel, it's actually very difficult for us to celebrate liturgy as Catholic, a Catholic community in the same way. Because mm. um, it's a very secular space. It's a it, very secular space. It's, it's yeah. arranged clearly as a church with yeah. benches and an aisle. Yeah. There's a sort of altar area. Um, there will be a Christian symbol. Um, mm. In most places they offer the cross, but very rarely with the, with the figure on the corpus on it. They will have some sort of um, usually artificial candles. And then they'll replace those, obviously, for people of other faiths. So the, mm. the Star of David or whatever would come out for, for Sikhs and Hindus and Muslims. But it isn't, in a sense, a place, certainly as well, because of the time limit often put on us, where we can celebrate um, what we would understand to be a theological liturgy and um, a way of talking to people about the resurrection, which is the heart of our funeral liturgies. Um, too often the crematorium, um, has become the place now more for a eulogiac form of mm. celebration, a celebration of the life of. Um, and at the end of the day, that, that is true, but the life is past. It's the future we ought to be thinking of for the person who's died. Mm. Um, there was quite a lot of publicity last week about a new <coughs> statement that came from the Vatican mm. about cremation. Yeah. Uh, I should perhaps say that we are recording this on the well, All Souls Day, as yes, you mentioned, yeah. very appropriately, yeah. which is the 2nd of November 2016. Yeah. So. A new statement came out of the Vatican last week about cremation. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yes. Um, there's very little new in it. Um, okay. Pia Constantin, which is the very simple document that came out permitting cremation in 1964, basically said cremation is an option now available to Catholics, but in no sense should it ever be used when at any point in time it denied the resurrection of the body, life after death, belief in the resurrection of Christ. Since that time, various things about cremation have changed, and in particular, the sort of thing about the way you dispose of ashes, the way people have begun to make jewellery out of ashes, even to use it as a glaze on a mug. Um, and so the church has, in a sense, just restated, but because of those sort of things, mm. the fact that um, the ashes of somebody who's died should be buried in the hope of the resurrection. Um, no requiem mass or Catholic funeral should be offered if somebody denies the resurrection or if cremation is seen to be a denial of afterlife in that sense. Mm. Um, and then clearly it's taking into account issues around jewellery made of ashes. And, and the other thing is, is that there was a prohibition in that first document on the scattering of ashes. Mm. Because that seemed to be a way of throwing somebody away. And that might sound a bit harsh, but our understanding of corporeal resurrection is very important. Mm. And I suspect that the scattering was quite a common practice. I suspect in I've seen that in wills written in the seventies. Yes. That, <coughs> that seemed to be, you know, I wish to be cremated and have my ashes scattered. And, and now, of course, we've got all this strange technology. Mm. So, you know, the jewellery and the mugs yes. and the things that you are referring um, to. I mean, so. 
One of the problems we have now is that many Catholics haven't understood that because it ha wasn't presented to them because mm. cremation was uh, such a small, n uh, was so small amongst Catholics mm. that very little had been said about it. So now people come and expect to be able to scatter ashes. Mm. Um, and that, of course, then causes a problem. Um, another issue that we face w in practicality is um, the fact that most Catholic churches don't have any form of graveyard. No. Indeed. Um, so sometimes people have said, well, can we bury our ashes um, in, in the local garden of the church? But that has all sorts of implications um, f should you want to dispose of the building later on. It, mm. it's, and then how do you actually deal with somebody's feelings for what it, what, where somebody is buried in that way? Mm. Thank you very much, Kevin. That's been very enlightening um, very discussion mm. of um, Catholic attitudes to cremation. Thank you very much.